Hey guys, Solomon here. Hope y'all are having a great day. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite chess openings for black, primarily against the most popular options of E4 and D4. And again, this is not me saying, just like I said in my recent video for my favorite options for white, this is not me saying that these are the best openings for black and that nothing comes close. Okay, there's so many good options depending on your style of play, your rating, etc., etc. But that being said, I mean, some of these systems are very popular. I think others are very underrated. In either case, you know, even in the main lines, I'm going to try to show you guys some unique ideas that you can try out and, uh, you know, just to add a little spin to things. Um, let's first take a look at what to do against D4. Now, first off, no matter what white plays, okay, if they play D4, if they play the English, E4, the birds opening, the ready, okay, whatever they go with, um, we can always play the hippo opening, okay, the hippo defense, okay, so I'm just going to throw that out there. The hippo defense is a cheat code, and really 90% percent of the time we don't really care what the opponent's doing when we play the hippo right we're going to get that we're going to try to get that set up every single time and form that brick wall that being said let's move on what other options do we have for black well against d4 i mean you know there, there's quite a few um different options i think an underrated option is actually the old benoni defense with c5 okay i'm um, not the benoni defense but the old benoni playing c5 right away putting pressure on d4 and what I found is that a good amount of players just take this pawn. They're going, okay, if you want to give me a pawn, I'll take it. Guys, this is actually a mistake because they do get the pawn, but if they want to hold on to it, they're going to have to give up more than they get, okay? So we're going to play this move of e6, looking to capture back with tempo, which is not what white wants, um, especially because they gave up one of their center pawns for one of our flank pawns. So, I mean, okay, if we take back on c5, we're going to be outnumbering, you know, white in the center, two to one. Um, which is definitely an advantage for us. Um, and here, if you know White tries to hang on to it with a move like Bishop E3, we're actually going to play Knight A6. Now, yes, the Knight on the rim is dim, but this Knight has a purpose, and that is to help support as a winning, you know, winning back this pawn on C5. And here, if the move of B4 is played, y'all, we got to go after this pawn chain right away. Right? We can't sit around, can't sit around and play a move like Bishop E7, mess around, castle kingside, because White's going to get settled in right we got to go after this very overextended pawn chain with this move of a5 look if you want to take on a5 you're going to have two sets of double isolated pawns and just as i had um highlighted i mean we can really take these pawns off whenever we want right uh, there, there's no getting around that um and here if white plays a move like a3 this doesn't really solve the problem because we're simply going to take and if you take back thank you for the rook on a1 right and finally, if this move of c3, I've actually had this happen in my own games playing as black. Um, here, white simply falls into a trap because we take this pawn, and it seems like for a second, okay, maybe white has successfully held onto their pawn and get and you know got some space in the process. But now we play this move of queen f6, absolutely killer idea, attacking the rook. And um, okay, I mean, let's face it, this rook can't run away can't even move and these pawns are so far overextended that a pawn can't get in the way the only i think really the best move here for white is to actually give up the knight right because you're either going to give up the knight or you're just going to give up an entire rook in either case black is completely winning this um i mean yeah move five already going up a piece or a rook i'll take that any day of the week so going back again play c5 it's it's really not the best idea for white to to you know to take there um, this is actually also a good option in bullet chess. Um, oftentimes when you play c5, your opponent will pre-move like c4 or they'll pre-move knight f3. And that just allows you to take on d4 and, and give them a whole different look than what they're used to. But okay, I mean, if it's a slower game and they play this move d5, we're still completely fine. In fact, we're going to take control of the center here with e5. If they want to play en passant, we're going to take back towards the center with the f-pawn. And that's actually in our favor. And here, if they continue with the move like e4, we're now going to play d6. And, and really, guys, what we're trying to do with the old Benoni is create a, an imbalance very quickly. right? We're trying to fight for the win. We're not trying to get a boring, positional, London game type system. right? In fact, this is potentially i mean arguably the easiest way to just completely get rid of the london at all just play c5 move one there goes the london system joe baba london out the door london out the door right etc etc so um in this case we're uh you know we're looking at ideas like f5 a6 is all, always a good option getting a grip on b5 um you know a lot of players like playing knight f6 bishop e7 castle on king's side that's great you know you get quick development i personally though i don't really like my bishop on e7 when i can i like to fianchetto my bishop um on g7 and by playing g6 we're also supporting a further f5 push and we, we kind of get king's indian um defense attack ideas right so uh, attacking ideas so that's that's one way that you can play that all that to say 
uh, you know, very solid system for black. All these openings I'm going to be leaving a link to in the description below um, just so you guys can get, you know, more in-depth ideas on these lines, variations, and strategies. Okay, so that's that's one of the things we can do um, is C5. We can also play this move knight f6. Okay, so one of my, um, my recent go-tos uh, against um, C4 is actually playing C5 and going into a Banco Gambit. Okay, this is an underrated system. I'm actually surprised I don't see it more, especially at the lower levels of play. There's a ton of GMs that go with this. Um, and, and black here is really going for long-term advantages. Most gambits were going for, you know, attacking chances, going for the checkmate. Actually, this gambit, we're playing for a better end game, which is, which is very rare. Um, actually, it's kind of hard for me to think of an opening right now that uh, a gambit that does that like the Benko does. But OK, I mean, we're putting pressure on C4 already to take there, um, you know, if, if we if we'd like to later on. Usually here, though, white's going to take the pawn, in which case we play a6. Now here, white can go for the declined variation with b6, or they can accept the pawn. Well, the reason that white sometimes declines it is because they don't want this rook to be active. As you'll see, if white accepts this, we actually don't need to take this pawn off right away. We can actually just continue with, you know, playing a move like g6. We have so many attacking pieces on this pawn. There's not much white can do to defend it. Um, and if white plays this well, if they go with the main line, they're, they're going to play e4, take back with the king. White can fall into trouble very quickly here if they don't know what they're doing, but I'm, I'm just showing you, you know, the best way white can play. Um, you know, let's say white plays move like knight f3. We're going to castle. This king tucks away on g2. And at this point, we can play a move like knight bd7 and knight g4. Okay, so this is the key idea, fighting for this e5 square. Notice just how much of a monster this bishop on g7 is, right? I mean, just cutting down f6, e5, d4, c3, b2. This bishop is an absolute uh, monster. Just a cheat code in this position. Um, and uh, on top of that, I mean, look, one of the main ideas on top of getting a knight to e5 is activating our queen at some point. We can put a queen on, you know, really any of these three squares. Uh, I think most of the time b6 or a5 is more aggressive. C4 is also a good option, pushing to C4, especially with the knight on E5, because we can jump a knight into D3. And remember, white was forced to give up their light squared bishop, um, unless, of course, they wanted to deal with this bishop on A6 the whole game. So they're giving up their light squared bishop. So D3, even in this position, is a weak square if we can manage to get C4 and knight E5 in. And lastly, I think one of the main ideas is actually to eventually get this rook to B8, okay? Okay. It's, it's fascinating. Even Grandmaster players as black will purposely go into an endgame a pawn down, which is usually at their level completely losing. But at the Banco, it's a great idea because you're you're down a pawn. But notice, we have one pawn island. Very solid structure. Really no weaknesses to speak of. And yes, you're up a pawn, but these rooks are just barreling down on both of these pawns. And usually white's not going to be able to really you know make progress or even activate their rooks if we can continue to trade down here and into an endgame without giving up at least one or two pawns, right? If we get this rook to b8, we're going to be putting pressure on b2. Oftentimes, white will try to defend it with both of their rooks. Our rooks can start to lift and look at pawns like e4. Our king can start to march into e5. Obviously, I'm talking very big picture here, but again, very simple system. Just memorize that line, um, activate your queen, get that rook to b8, look at c4, try to get a knight into d3. And you're going to be in business. Okay, so that's the Banco Gambit. Um, I think another uh, fun option that Black can play. I've actually had decent success uh, success with this online. Um, I have yet to play it in a tournament because it's a little gutsy, but it's this move of knight c6. Okay, with the Black Knight's tango. The reason I haven't played it in a tournament is that White can just sit there and play knight f3. White can play knight f3, and I actually think White, you know, has a solid game there. In that case, we're going to have to look at moves like you know e6. Um, you know, or a d5 prep. Um, but all that to say, what we're trying to do here with this knight c6 move is tempt white into playing d5. We actually want white to kick us around and kick us around and continue to kick us around. But notice here, we played e6, trying to chip away at that center. We're playing bishop b4, attacking the knight. Um, I'm just going to go back through, you know, through that a little bit slower just so you guys can get it move by move. Again, d5 is played, go into the center, right? f4 is played. And it's trippy. White here can play aggressively. We're going to chip away at the center. They can continue to push, but they've pushed so hard that it's their king that's the one that's the big target here. We're now going to play knight e4. Our king's actually a lot safer than theirs because they've pushed their fence so far that they don't really have any protection. Okay, at, at this point in the game, we're, we're putting two pieces on this pin knight, so that's a threat. We're also threatening queen h4 with check. 
which is nasty against that king on e1. Both of these are great threats. If white, you know, tries to stop with the move like queen d3, we have knight c5 ready to go. And the computer gives an advantage to black there. And if a move like queen f3, I'm a big fan of f5. Okay, f5 is played really just hunkering this knight into e4, continuing to put pressure on c3. Notice bishop c3, or sorry, bishop d3 doesn't do anything. Um, I mean, it, it does attack the knight, but in return, the queen's going to be cut off from the knight. So we're just going to take that knight off the board. So, so you know, white's in a, a hard position here. Um, and notice that they, if they do a little en passant, we're not going to take back with the knight. We're not going to do that. Because then white at, at that point is, you know, they're, they're starting to feel a little bit better about their game. We're going to capture back with the queen. Now we don't have one or two, but three pieces all hunkering down on that knight on c3. And uh, let's just say white's in major, major trouble. I mean, if they take our knight on e4, we're going to take uh, back the knight on c3, check the king. We we'll take on b2. And of course, if you take our bishop, we're going to say thank you for the rook very soon here. Okay, so black black's completely winning that. I'll just say Black Knight's Tango. Underrated option, fun opening. Even if you don't play it, it's a it's a fun one to learn. Um, as I said, I'm gonna leave all these openings down in the description below if you're curious about playing these or just, just learning some more chess, right? So that's a fun option. Um, I think Eric Rosen also has some good, good content on this, and I believe he actually played it in a tournament. Um, in Vegas, if I remember correctly. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know down in the comment section below, but I'm pretty sure he played this um, Black Knight's Tango in a, an actual USC F-rated tournament. So, okay, nice C6. Um, and yeah, that really covers the the three moves that I, you know, the three systems that are, that are somewhat underrated, I think, against um, the move of D4, right? The old Benoni, um, playing Knight F6, and then going into either a Black Knight's Tango or into the much more sound um, and, and fun Banco Gambit, right? Um, I think the Black Knight's Tango isn't very sound because white doesn't really have to push with d5. And then our, you know, I mean, in that in that scenario, like I said, knight f6, knight c6. If white starts pushing here, that's great for us because, you know, we're giving them the center, but we're going to make that center a target for the rest of the game. But they could just sit there and play knight f3 and kind of ask us what on earth our knight's doing there. So all that to say, um, take this opening with a grain of salt, okay? Um, what about this move of e4? Uh, what do I like to play against this? Um, I've become a huge fan of the Owens defense, which is this move of b6. Okay, um, really just trying to put immediate pressure on e4. I think the best way for white to play this is bishop d3, in which case, okay, we're still going to play um, e6. But oftentimes white plays nice e3. And the, the main idea here of the, the Owens defense is to make this pawn on e4 the target. By doing that in this position, we're actually not going to attack it directly, but a but really pin one of the key defending pieces. So now we're just threatening to win this pawn. If white defends it, attack it again. Okay, we're going to keep putting pressure on this. White defends it, put, put pressure on it again. If you take back on d5, we have queen takes d5 available. If we'd like, again, this knight's pinned, so you can't take our queen. And here, if white tries to, you know, lock this dang game down and get some space, we're not going to run away to d7. We're going to throw our knight into e4, put a ton of pressure on c3, the best move here for white is bishop d2, and would you know just trying to defend that knight, defend that minor piece. In that case, uh, we can just continue though with taking the bishop, um, or, or or playing bishop takes e3 first if we'd like to. And you know I think black um, has a slightly worse position there, but it's definitely very playable. I've I've played it myself many times, and okay, I mean we're going into the middle game. Um, I think you know h6, just just develop the pieces at the point, and you're going to be okay. All right. Um, and notice here if white takes the knight on e4, they're actually completely losing now because we take back with the pawn. Yeah, if queen takes, thank you for the queen. And if knight takes, oh wait, you can't do that. And uh, okay, I mean, this knight's gonna have to move. And by doing that, we're gonna get this pawn on d4. Our queen's just throwing itself in there, putting a ton of pressure on c3, ton of pressure on e5. We're defending e4. And uh, okay, I mean, white's pretty close to throwing in the towel here if they're not careful. So that's one option you have is the Owens defense with b6. That being said, against d4, you could also play b6 move one. It's actually considered the English defense, but it kind of tempts white into transposing into the Owens defense if you're a avid Owens defense fan. Um, there's also this move of c6, okay, with the Carl Khan. Now, this is a much more mainline system, okay, probably the most mainline system that I've shared today, um, along with the Banco Gambit. That being said, the Banco Gambit isn't played very much, the Carl Khan is, okay. Um, but I did want to mention this little idea that I've been messing around with lately, and that is against the advanced variation. This is actually why I stopped playing 
uh, the Carl Connor tournaments. I just, you know, E5, I just had a terrible time against it. I, I was just like, gosh, what do I do? I mean, if you take on D5, we can capture back and just develop, and black's okay. If you play an IC3, we take, we play an out of six, we develop, we're fine. But against E5, I just had a terrible time here, especially with bishop F5. I just felt my like my bishop was, was awkward. I didn't feel like it was doing much. I mean, it's attacking C2, but who cares? White can trade it off whenever the heck they want. Um, we got to be worried, you know, against a move like H4 about traps here. I mean, it's just, there's so many things that can go wrong. But what I've discovered recently is this very underrated move of G6. Okay, and I didn't even have this recommended to me. I was just looking at online databases. Guys, this move performs extremely well. And here's the idea behind it. In fact, I was sharing this with one of my chess students. Um, by the way, if you're interested in lessons, I'll leave a link below and, uh, you know, no, no strings attached. If you just want to reach out and talk about, you know, what do you want to work on? Um, you know, the areas that you want to improve in and, you know, kind of your long-term goals, I'd love to talk to you and just get to know you. Um, but that being said, I was talking to a student about this move and here's the idea. We're not playing E6 right away. Okay. We're not playing E6 right away because our bishop will get locked in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to wait for knight F3. And whenever white plays that, we're going to play bishop g4 and simply look to trade off. Okay, We're going to put, place our bishop on g4, and we're not going to trade off right away. We're going to wait until h3 is played, make white waste a move, and then trade off. Okay, Many of you are probably thinking to yourselves, okay, why would we want to do that? Well, first off, all of our pawns are on light squares, so this bishop is already going to be a bad bishop. There's just no way around that, Okay, especially if we play e6. I mean, this bishop is worse than a French bishop because this pawn's on c6, not c5. So if we can trade off for that knight on f3, that would be fantastic. If white tries to not let us do this, let's say they play a move here like bishop d3, taking away this square. Okay, we're just going to continue developing, play this move with bishop g7 very quickly. I think h5 is a good idea, just looking to gain space on the king side. We have knight h6 and knight f5 on the way. Again, we're going to keep this bishop here for a while. But, uh, you know, I've played this and, I'm, and I, you know, I like it. I think that black gets a playable game out of that. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, it's not for everybody, but... You know, if you play the Carl Kahn and you're like me and you have you have trouble with that bishop on f5, you know, my student that I was just talking about, he he hated the bishop on f5. Actually, two of them. So we, you know, but but with both of those students, I've I've been talking about g6 and they seem to seem to like that that setup. But okay, I mean that that's one option. Um, besides the Carl Kahn, um, these are two openings I mentioned. I had to throw this in there. Okay, I had to throw this in there. I mean, of course, there's so many good good openings. The French. The Sicilian, I played the Sicilian Nardorf nearly my whole life in tournament play. Um, there's also this move of, um, you know, e5, which can lead uh, to a ton of good openings, right? I mean, knight, knight f3, knight c6 is just classical chess. But I did have to mention this opening because it's fun. Okay, it might not be sound, but it's fun. Okay, sometimes in chess, you just got to have a little bit of fun. Okay, it's against knight f3. And if you've watched Eric Rosen, you know what I'm about to say. Stafford Gambit, take back, ton of freaking traps um, in this in this position. I've covered eight of them on my channel. One of my favorites is against knight c3. We're going to play bishop c5. A lot of white players know the Stafford, and they know that we want to get our knight into g4. So some of them will play this move h3, right? Just trying to just, hey, I'm not even messing around with that move, with, the, with this whole knight g4 thing, right? I'm just going to lock that down right now. Well... If they do that, this g5 move, again, not sound, but very fun, very exciting, crazy, looking to play g4. Um, and here, if white tries to, you know, get their king castle quickly, we're going to throw our queen into d4, right? Notice if rook f1, we take on e4, and black's, you know, achieved equality there, um, if if not being a little better, honestly. Um, and if castling king side, throw that pawn in g4, right? Put some pressure on h3 notice here if a move like h4 we're going to continue with g3 and continue to just stack pressure on f2 white is in major major trouble here and going a couple moves back if white takes um you know we can now continue with h5 right putting pressure on this pawn uh, if you want to take this pawn you're up two pawns now but i mean talk about having an overextended position and we've actually kind of given up our pawns on purpose on purpose it's funny if both of our pawns were here I, th I, I think white actually might be a little bit better but because these pawns are not here we're playing rook g8 and i mean just talk about a very vulnerable king right we have a queen and a bishop on this diagonal so this pawn's not going to be moving for a long time uh, we have ideas like knight g4 and queen e5 you know pouncing down on h2 we can always develop castle queenside if needed bishop h3 ideas in the air as well 
so much can go wrong here for white and uh yeah i mean this game is just close to being over so um yeah if you take just play rook g8 um and play attacking chess try to get that checkmate and if they don't take here and they just sit there okay we're just going to take you back uh probably with the knight there or with the pawn honestly either one works um the only one i wouldn't recommend there is with the bishop um i mean it's okay it's not bad i think we're still better but you know taking with the pawn gives you that advantage of the rook being active and taking with the knight puts a ton of pressure on f2 and gives you that queen e5 queen h2 route um what happens here though if white plays g5 well knight g4 right they they, they played h3 trying to prevent it but we threw a pawn in there made this pawn go up our knight go, comes in we're attacking f2 um you know if you want to play queen e1 we have queen e5 threatening a mate in one g3 doesn't do anything keep in mind guys this pawn cannot move again it is pinned to the king on g1 and if the if the g pawn moves takes check my game over um so again there's just so many so many ways um why i can fall into trouble here and finally if they take uh we're going to capture back this rook is now very active if white plays a move like g3 here um, i think the computer recommends moves like bishop e6 castling queen side rook h3 with just a monumental attacking edge on the white camp and if they don't play g3 we're going to play g3 ourselves and i believe uh, i mean you know besides crazy moves like queen g4 in which case we just take the queen or rookie one in which case we just get a mate in one we could almost just pre-move rook h1 almost every single move rook h1 works um eric rosen actually got this trap in a game playing rook h1 queen h8 and queen h2 this is just one of my one of my favorites because it's just very aesthetically pleasing you give up the rook the queen does a little dance here goes back to h8 flies into h2 and there you have it game over so those are just some options that you guys can mess around with uh, i think against e4 again we had the um what well, we have the owns defense carl Kahn, stafford gambit uh, against d4 we had the um old benoni defense black knights tango and the banco gambit and as you know big hippo guy here you can play the hippo whenever you want. Thanks for watching today's video. Let me know down in the comment section below what your favorite openings are. And uh, let me know what you think of these opening options, if you like them, if you've had any, any success with them, or if there's any questions you have about any of these systems. Thanks for watching, and I'm wishing you all a great day.